Hi, this is Amy from the Alti store. So we just finished doing a video that went through a whole bunch of different terms of um, regarding charging deep cycle batteries. So we're going to start the second part of it and we're going to talk about charge rates and we're going to talk a bit about it because it is really pretty important and we're going to be comparing charge rates of AGM batteries, sealed batteries and um, lithium batteries. So um, here we go. So charge rates, a charge rate or a C rate is how fast a battery is charged or discharged. So how many amps are put in or pulled out of the battery? So um, the charge rate is based on its amp hour capacity. So you'll see that the capacity of a battery actually changes based on how fast you're pulling um, power in or out of it. So um, the, the charge rate is the amp hours, the rated amp hours of the battery divided by the amps that are put in or out. So that's your C rate. And most batteries are rated at the 20 hour rate. So let's take a look here. If we look at the 20 hour, and we'll get into this a little bit more in the next slide. But you'll see here at a 20 hour rate, you've got 92 amp hour capacity. But if you pull the power out or put it in slower than that rating, you're gonna actually have higher capacity. So if you're gentler with the battery, it's gonna be able to handle more energy. So it's going to be able to store more energy. So your capacity goes up to 100. Whereas you take a look and drop down to say three hours, if you take all the energy out in three hours, you're only going to have 75 amp hours available as opposed to the 92. So you'll see that based on the, the charge rate, your capacity changes. So it's a little bit of a balance because your charge rate is based on the capacity. So again, here's an example, a 100 amp hour battery at, a, at five amps charging or discharging is a C20 rate, or sometimes you'll see it as a 0.2 C. So that is a C20 rate where you're taking, you're doing 20% of the amp hour capacity. So that means if you take a 100 amp hour battery and you're drawing it out at five amps in 20 hours, it'll be completely empty. So different types of batteries prefer different C rates and your manufacturers will actually list what their uh, recommended limits are. So we're going to go through a few different ones. So bear with me while we go, we go through some, because I think it's important to see the difference in different technologies and even just within different brands. So um, taking a look at a Trojan battery, flooded lead acid, example its maximum um, recommended is 13 percent so if we say we've got a 100 amp hour battery that's 13 amps so 100 amp hour divided by the 13 amps is a c7 that's their recommended ideal charge rate that makes for a happy battery you're not charging too fast you're not charging too slow it makes for a real happy battery. Now, if we take a look over here at uh, looking at a different brand and different type, a sealed lead acid battery from Crown Battery, um, they list both the maximum and the recommended. And you can see the maximum is 35 amps, but their recommended is less than half of that at 15 amps. So they recommend around a C7.3, but they say that as a maximum, you can do a C3.1. So when you're designing a system, you can keep these in mind where do you wanna go for the, the recommended for the healthiest battery, or do you wanna push your batteries a little bit more and uh, go closer to the, the maximum rating? So let's take a look at another AGM, a different brand, the Kilovolt. Its actual maximum charge 
current is 140 amps with 100 amp recommended. Now it's a 180 amp hour battery, so at the recommended 100 amps, that's actually a, a C1.8. That's pretty fast. That's, that's really being able to, to pull a lot of current out, out of that battery. So the maximum of 140 amps, that's a C.1.28. So that's almost a one for one. You can almost pull out as much. Uh, you can almost dra drain it in, in like an hour and 25 minutes. Um, and again, I say drain it. Uh, it's an AGM battery. We don't recommend you do that. So you have to keep in mind, if you're going to be using something at such a high current, you're going to make sure that you only use it for a short amount of time, say half an hour, so that you're, you're um, not using too much of the stored energy for a lead acid battery. Now we're gonna start talking about lithium batteries because the, the battery chemistry really does make a difference. So with the lithium batteries, it also varies a lot by battery and by manufacturer. So even within this manufacturer of Kilovolt, They've got uh, two different batteries here that I'm using for an example in their HLX line, 150 amp hour and a 300 amp hour battery. They, both of them have got 150 amp charge or discharge limit. So if you take a look at it, the one that's 150 amp hour, the, the 1800, that's gonna see one rate so you can, you can actually charge that battery from empty in an hour. But the one that's twice as big, that's a C2 rate. So that's the 300 amp hours divided by 150 amps is C2. So again, same battery manufacturer, uh, different models have got different charge rates. Now we take a look at Simplify. They've got this um, 48 volt, 3.8 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, it's 75 amp hours and it has a recommended 37 and a half amp charge. So a C2 charge rate, but an 80 amp or C.9 discharge rate. So again, same battery, same model, but even different recommended charge and discharge rates. So when you're doing your designs, you really do want to make sure you take a look at the specs of, from the manufacturer to see what their recommendations are. So let's use a couple of battery sizing examples. And we're gonna use these examples for both uh, lead acid and lithium, just so you'll see a lot of the differences and see where some of this stuff really comes into play. So for all of these examples, we're going to use a Solark 12 kilowatt hybrid inverter. So it's a grid tied battery backup inverter. And if you have nine kilowatts of solar going into that Solark, you've got 185 amp charging capability. Now in this example, we're using it for grid tied battery backup. So we want to design the smallest battery bank possible because we don't have a huge amount of loads that we're backing up, but we want to be able to, to um, take all of that 185 amps when we're charging and charge up the battery bank. Once that battery bank is full, then we're gonna use it in the house or sell it back to the grid. So we've got this 185 amp maximum that we're keeping in mind here. So if we take that first battery we talked about, the Crown, uh, it's a 110 amp hour battery. It has a 35 amp maximum. So if we say, all right, we're taking 185 amps of solar and putting it into there, um, and it's got a maximum of 35 amps, you would have to have over five strings, basically six 
parallel strings of these batteries so that you can divide that current, that charging current, uh, across the whole battery bank. Now, Crown does not recommend using six, bat six uh, strings. They actually recommend only two parallel strings. So you would not be able to use this battery in this design. We just have to start again with a different battery. So let's take a look at a bigger one of their batteries, a 230 amp hour battery that's got a recommended charge rate of 40 amps um, with a maximum of 80. So again, the recommended is, uh, is a C5.75 and the maximum is C2.8. So we'll keep those two numbers in mind. If we take that 185 amps from the solar and we're going to use their maximum charge rate. So that says that we would need 2.3 or round up to three strings. So three strings of, of four batteries in series to get your 48 volts means we've got 12 batteries. And so that gives us 33 kilowatt hour total battery bank. And as of March of 2021, that's going to cost right around $8,000. Okay. And we're going to summarize all this a little bit later. So now let's take a different brand that we had talked about, the Kilovolt, their 2100 PLC with 140 max charge rate, 185 max charge coming from the solar divided by their recommended 140 amps, that gives you 1.3. So you'd need two strings. So two strings as opposed to the three strings of this battery. So we're only going to need eight instead of 12, two parallel strings of four in series. And that gives us 17 kilowatt hours. So again, remember we were looking for kind of the smallest battery bank that we could do because we don't have a lot of loads, we just want to be able to charge it quickly with that full solar. So because we only need eight of those batteries, that's going to be only uh, $3,500 for that battery bank. Again, as of March, 2021. So now let's take a look at lithium. That kilovolt 1800 we had looked at before with 150 amp charge. So we take a look at that 185 amp from the solar divided by the 150 amp recommended from the manufacturer. Again, we only need two strings of this. So eight of those batteries will give us 14.4 kilowatt hours and that'll cost about $7,500 for a lithium battery bank. So now our final example is, is using the Simplify batteries. So those 3.8 kilowatt hour batteries, 48 volt batteries, and they've got that maximum of a 37.5 amp charge. So 185 amp max charge divided by that one, uh, divided by that 37 and a half means we're going to need five parallel batteries. So keep in mind those are 48 volt batteries. So we don't need to have any in series. We just need to have five strings of them. So that gives us 19 kilowatt hour total. So that is a total of 12,600 um, as of March, 2021. So let's take a look at the summary of these. And um, I think it's kind of important to, to go over a few things. So if we're looking at the AGM, the, the sealed lead acid batteries, with that Crown 20, 230 amp hour battery, we needed 12 of them, um, four in series, three parallel strings of that. So that gave us 3,300 kilowatt hours. So that did give us the biggest capacity battery bank, and that was $8,000 total. But again, in this example, we didn't really need such a big capacity because we were just, um, just backing up a few items in the house. So this actually 
gives us a battery bank that's bigger than what we need. So if we take a look at the kilovolt one, where it is half the size practically, 17,000 uh, watt hours, but it's less than half the price. So I can get away with only eight of these batteries, $3,500, and I can have a small battery bank backing up my fridge, my, my well, my uh, you know, furnace, and that sort of thing. And I don't have to spend a ton of money on the battery bank for storage that I don't need in this situation. Now, if we go over and we look at the lithium, the kilovolt ones, those are 1800 uh, watt hours. We only need eight of them for 14.4 kilowatt hours. And keeping in mind, because these are lithium, I can actually use most of this capacity because with lithium batteries, I can go down to 80 or 90% depth of discharge. I can use a lot more than I can with the sealed batteries. So for actually less money than the, uh, the Crown AGM battery bank, I can get a lithium battery bank. And again, because I can use more of the stored energy, I'm getting about the same amount of usable energy in a lithium bank, which will give me a longer life. So that's, um, that's a pretty good example of where lithium really can be a cost-effective solution for your needs. Um, then we take a, good, a look at the Simplify one. And the Simplify uh, battery bank, because we needed five of them and it's got a, a little bit bigger array, that was going to cost up in the $12,000 range. So that's probably not the right solution for this particular example. But uh, just want to show you the comparison where a lot of times people will say that lithium is too expensive and more expensive option over AGM, but it's actually not. In this scenario, we've got a less expensive solution than, than using these Crown batteries. So I hope this was helpful. If so, give us a like and a share. Make sure you subscribe so we'll notify you of more videos. Don't forget to go to our website at altistore.com where we've been making renewable doable since 1999.